actually. I don't think you're allowed to be a star on the big television, uh, whatever you want to call it, screen, unless you do at least two holiday films. You also have to do two holiday films. It is one of the most practical pieces of advice I can give. People love holiday movies and because there are a finite number of them, they are shown every year on TV and streaming even the really terrible ones. That means residuals every year. That means people seeing your face every year most of these are probably going to be Christmas themed. There are more Christmas themed movies and, and commercials than there are any other holiday movie. This admittedly, from a limited Western English language speaking world perspective, I don't know what holiday movie situation is in Mumbai, Cairo, or Hong Kong. I do know this in the case of LA, New York, Atlanta, Toronto, Vancouver, and London, but they also make a good deal of Halloween and even Valentine's Day themed movies and commercials. Many of them have gotten surprisingly long shelf life. Everyone knows Hocus Pocus and many even still know Halloween Town. Did I just say Halloween Town? Because I don't even understand what Halloween Town is. That is before my time. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, uh huh. Everyone knows that damn Sears air conditioning commercial and that wasn't even for a holiday, it was just for a seasonal. You can make good money, but just doing something seasonal, do something seasonal, it makes you money. This doesn't just apply to actors. I know a lot of musicians and dancers who have been paid well for holiday performances and commercials. I dated someone who did this visual effects for a snowy iPhone commercial that shot in July. One of my friends qualified for a SAG after he was in a commercial playing an instrument behind Josh Groban. There's a reason so many popular musicians put out Christmas albums. They always sell. Gotta love that holiday spirit! Uh, yes. And they always need extras for Halloween themed movies, or at least they will, when people can congregate in groups again. Yes, this is all working within the capitalist framework of Hollywood. At some point in the future, in a better world, actors and musicians might only ever get paid for the work they truly want to do. But that's not the world we live in. You, of course, absolutely should not do this if it personally is offensive to you. And Die Hard is a Christmas movie discourse or people finally putting it together that continental treasure Catherine O'Hara is not more a rose but both Kevin McAllister's mom in Home Alone and Sally in Nightmare Before Christmas. Stuff I did this week? So many podcasts. First, my episode of Merrick Kay's The K-Hole came out. We got weird and deep talking about what we thought death would be like when we were kids. A screenplay I wrote when I was nine. Sword guys and many esoteric things. Diking Out had me on talk about musicals, which as you know, some of my favorite things in the world. We talked about the Cinderella's and the Peter Pans of our youth relating to pining young men characters and Sondheim's leading ladies. I was thrilled to be wired dads to discuss a Christmas story, and I was even more digressive here than usual, bringing up my grudge against the state of Indiana. What I call Christmas isn't about, trope, and the terrifying baby who said the nickname like a Pokemon. Also, we talked about the movie. Fake BBC show of the week, a Bramley clones, actually just a type of apple, but sounds cool. My Hockey Fight, A Cautionary Tale The sad truth of the memory is that it is fallible. It is easily influenced by our feelings and other things we've experienced. More collage than film, this is why I have a memory that I'm pretty sure also happened on Gilmore Girls. In both my dream and Gilmore Girls, Rory Gilmore and I went into a college laundry room, found a guy playing Belle and Sebastian and complimented him on his music. In Rory's version, as far as I remember, she asked Guy out and he turns her down. I think then, they later get into an argument but agree to forgive and forget when it turns out to be a big misunderstanding. In my version, he said, that's cool, I feel like no one knows Belle and Sebastian here. Which wasn't true. Because... Which wasn't true. Because everyone at NYU... 
in the 2000s, New Balance Sebastian, and every other indie band beloved by millions. It's possible that none of this happened on Gilmore Girls either. Someday, I'll rewatch that episode and see what actually happened, and maybe then I'll be able to parse what was my memory and what was Amy Sherman Palandino. What do I know is my memory is a story of a hockey friend. I lived in my down freshman year of college, and I wasn't actually my friend. I'm not sh even sure what his name was. I just call him Hockey Friend. After someone in a strong bad email, because he played hockey and it was 2005 and Homestar Runner took up a huge amount of my brain space at the time. Side note, I just realized the Hockey Friend episode is number 69, Nice Original Hockey Friend. 